My original intent was to go for a motorcycle ride before every recording for this podcast. And that would make sense. I wanted to have it fresh in my mind of exactly how great it felt to go for a motorcycle ride and experience the joys of riding once again before speaking about it. Well, that was my intent. But that's not going to happen for a little while. About 10 days ago, I was involved in a little accident. No, it wasn't a motorcycle accident, thank goodness. It was a coffee accident. (laughs) In my kitchen, I was simply reaching for a large, fairly heavy ceramic jar full of ground coffee. The jar started to slip from my hands, and as I went to grab it with my right hand, the jar broke. And let's just say it caused some complications to my right hand, and especially one of my fingers, uh, requiring hand surgery to reattach things that got detached. Now, before you completely stop listening to my podcast because you're getting grossed out, I will spare you all the details on that. But let me switch gears a little bit, though. Um, I am so, so very grateful to a kind and gifted hand surgeon, Dr. Lisa Lisa Nash, who put things back together for me. Um, I'm especially grateful also for so many things. For my neighbor, Brandon, who quickly drove me to the emergency room, Needless to say, for my wife, too, who was actually working several miles away and who arrived shortly thereafter to hold my good hand there at the hospital while I kind of managed the pain and emotions of the whole ordeal. Yeah, I've got a lot, a lot to be thankful for, for sure. But my reality now is that I'm not going to be writing for a while, they tell me. Um... Uh, going through physical therapy and the healing process and all that good stuff. I certainly get it. They're saying several weeks, if not months. So I guess the timing was could have been worse. It could have been right in the middle of the writing season, and maybe I had some trips planned and stuff, but it's still early season now. So my hope is that uh, I'll be in good enough condition to participate in this year's Distinguished Gentleman's Ride Uh, benefit in May that uh, I'll be talking more about that on a future podcast. So meanwhile, I'll approach things a little bit differently uh, as my hand recovers and I go through through physical therapy. Uh, Maybe this, though, will allow me to more clearly emphasize what this podcast maybe should really be about. Thanks for joining me today. Recorded in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. Welcome to Peace Love Moto, the podcast for motorcyclists seeking that peaceful, easy feeling as we cruise through this life together. Are you ready? Let's go. So, given the events of this past week, I thought the timing might be good to try to explain where the name of the podcast comes from. I'm not sure if I have a good explanation, really, at all. It just kind of kind of came to me. But peace, love, moto. Well, peace is a very strong word, I know, and but so is love. It's an even stronger word. Moto fits because it's about motorcycling, our common love and passion for motorcycling. Well, I feel like the peace and love part need further explanation, so I'll try. If you've heard my previous podcast, you know I absolutely love riding motorcycles. I keep saying that over and over again, right? I have for a very long time. I love to listen to podcasts about motorcycling also. One of the podcasts that I especially enjoy listening to is called Adventure Rider Radio. It's by Jim Martin. Uh, He's up in British Columbia, I believe, and uh, I think he just just does such a great job with that. I listen to several others as as well. But I suppose two things that I've experienced in the last year or so made me feel compelled to call my podcast Peace Love Moto. First, I discovered mindfulness. I actually discovered mindfulness through my work. 
I have a job in corporate America. I work for a very large IT company. And our company embraced mindfulness a couple of years ago. They even make classes and discussions available to all employees during the workday. I mean, it's fully supported. I, I think that's totally awesome. They've discovered the fact that happy, relatively calm, and clear-headed employees are productive employees. And I certainly agree. So maybe the peace, at least partially, comes from the peace of mind that we can get through mindfulness practices. Again, that's something we'll probably circle back to on another podcast, but I get a lot out of it, and I highly suggest investigating that for yourself if you're interested. So the word peace, love, moto means a desire maybe for peace on earth at the larger, you know, at the highest level. Certainly that we all desire. And it's a common desire for peace of mind, as I mentioned. And many of us have found that riding our motorcycle brings just that, peace of mind. I've mentioned that in previous episodes, I think just about every time I've spoken to that. Well, we're fortunate, aren't we? We're very, very fortunate to have that hobby or sport or whatever you want to call it available to us to be able to hop on our motorcycle and go and take that physical and mental and emotional break to a different place, a place perhaps where all is right in the world, a place maybe where time stands still. Now, as far as the word love goes, wow. Now, that's a very strong word, I know, and it can mean many things to many people. I can say, I love this orange I'm eating right now, or I can say, I love my family. Two different meanings there, certainly. Spectrum is huge. But I think in this context, maybe it relates back to the peace part, peace of mind, to have the peace of mind we're always seeking. And part of that, I truly believe, is to have a love for yourself. Now, maybe you've not heard that expression before, but a biblical passage talks about love others as you love yourself. So when it comes to motorcycling and our presence in the community as motorcyclists, what might loving others look like? Well, in a previous podcast, I mentioned about the idea of not wearing your earbuds into a coffee shop but instead carrying a book or a magazine because it may make us appear more open for a conversation. It may be as simple as a way of expressing love to other people by just saying hello and just just a pleasant greeting. And better yet, starting a conversation with someone. You never know what's going on in a stranger's life. The world they may live in may just be completely awesome or it may be completely broken. I'm here to say that, again, I think as motorcyclists, we're extremely fortunate. We have the finances, we have the physical ability, the mental ability to go out and do something that we love. Not everybody has that. So maybe it's just the simple act of saying hello and starting a friendly conversation with a stranger is one way of showing love to someone else. I think it's safe to assume, too, that if you're listening to this podcast called Peace Love Moto, you probably ride a motorcycle and have an adventurous spirit, but you're also a person who cares. I'd be willing to bet that. I suppose that I am. I suppose that I inherited that from my parents and their parents. When I go out on a motorcycle ride, I'll often stop at a coffee shop. I know you're hearing that over and over again in my podcast, right? Well, that's just my day, I suppose. That's the way I like to do it. Well, on one particular day, I rode out to a place called The Forks, which is between Fort Collins, Colorado and the Wyoming border along Highway 287. I was riding on one of my smaller bikes that I don't carry a lot of tools on and, uh, well, anything else for that matter. Just the minimal stuff. Well, well. anyway, I went to the, to the Forks and ordered a coffee, and I was sitting out on their wonderful wide porch out there just kind of watching people and watching the scenery. You know, I was really hoping, too, that someone would come up and talk to me, a stranger. You know, that's a, always a bonus. I always hope to have a conversation with a stranger. But on this day, it just didn't happen. Other than talking with the cashier and the barista for a moment, 
nobody came by to talk with me out on the porch. It seems like everybody was really busy. So well, that was all fine. I just enjoyed the view and drank my coffee out there. It was midweek anyway, so I thought it would be a good time to head on back home. So I put my gear back on and headed back down the highway the same way that I came. But a very strange thing happened along the return route. On a lonely stretch of that road was a large tractor trailer rig pulled off on the side. And standing in front of it was a lady waving her arms at me, specifically at me. She needed some help, looked like. So I pulled off and went across the road and pulled up right in front of her truck. She already had the hood up, so I knew that she was having some mechanical issues. And she went on to say to me, well, how far is it to the nearest truck stop? And I gave her a rough estimate of about 10 miles or so. And she was in a bit of a panic. And so I just said, well, is there anything maybe I could help with? She showed me the problem. It seemed that a hose connecting to the turbo booster on that truck had become uh, disconnected because a steel bracket that held it together had broken. When she tried to reattach it, it just wouldn't stay on there. Every time she would gun the engine, then the hose would blow right back off. And she went on to describe to me that with the hills, the rolling hills that we have out there, that turbo has to work in order for that rig to pull its load over the, over the hills. So I just mentioned to her that I carry just a minimal pack on this bike, but I'd be glad to look around and see if there may be something that I could find that might fix things up, at least temporarily. I must tell you, it was like a miracle. I found inside my little bag about five or six heavy-duty tie wraps, which I typically carry, that or more, And I found about three feet of Gorilla Tape that I had wrapped around a screwdriver, also just kind of for emergencies. So I (laughs) I thought, what the heck, you mind if I give it a try? And she said, go for it. So I uh, started to go to work on it. And lo and behold, by the time I used all of my stuff, all five or six of those tie wraps and the three feet of Gorilla Tape, I had that hose on there pretty tight. It wasn't coming loose at least you know as I tried to pull it loose so I just asked her hey do you want to give it a try and she said sure so she jumped into the cab of that big diesel and before she gunned the engine she said you may want to step back now <laughs> I had already stepped back I wasn't too confident in my work but she gunned the engine and the hose stayed on the air pressure didn't knock it off like it was doing before she gave it two or three more times of gunning the engine and it just stayed on perfectly so I think that we were fixed at least temporarily until she could get to the next truck stop so fixing her truck temporarily is not what stuck with me really on that event what really stuck with me was what happened next this very kind lady said with her truck running she said can I give you a hug And I said, yes, absolutely. And she just gave me a hug right on the side of the road there on Highway 287. I stayed there a minute in the parking lot as she drove away. And I just thought about that, that, wow, the timing on this really couldn't have been better. And I certainly didn't expect this. When I think back on that day, I think about how the stars must have aligned just right once again. Had I striked up a conversation with a stranger there at the Forks at that coffee shop, I would have spent a lot more time there, certainly would have. Maybe someone else would have shown up to help her, I'm not sure, but I just seriously doubt that anyone else would have had the right stuff to be able to at least temporarily fix her truck right there on the spot. It just felt really good. It just felt really right. I've ridden a lot of miles, like I'm sure you have too, and I've had to depend on strangers every once in a while. Like I described in a previous podcast, when when my bike and I fell off into a ditch, it was the gentleman driving up in a Jeep who literally helped me pull my bike right back up on the road so I could be on my way again and everything was safe and sound. If I could leave you with just one bit of encouragement or advice, I would 
tell you this, that when we're out on our bikes, let's look for every opportunity to love our neighbor, to care for somebody else. It may be just a kind word at a coffee shop, or it may be you're going out and fixing someone's big rig truck. Maybe it doesn't really compare, but I think that for a very, very long time, I'll be very grateful to my neighbor who drove me to the hospital, certainly for my wife for being by my side then and always being by my side, for the people who were so kind to me and calming me down at the emergency room, and especially Dr. Nash, who was just so kind and just so perfectly fixed my finger. I'll just be so grateful for all of that. And when I walk out to my garage over these next weeks when I can't go for a ride, I once again am going to be going to be patting my motorcycles on the tank and just say thank you bikes for the adventures that you've already taken me on and the adventures that we will I hope soon have again together thank you so much for listening I wish you peace I wish you love